Lessons in 10 Minutes or Less. I'm Jacob, and today we're talking about retreating blade stall and V&E. Now I'll kind of segue into this video from my last one called Dissymmetry of Lift Expanded, where I explained the different aerodynamic regions of the rotor disc. I'd recommend checking out that video first because this video builds directly off the previous one. So let's get started. Now just like an airplane's wing can stall at low air speeds, the same can happen to the retreating blade of a helicopter. However, unlike planes and helicopters, this occurs in high-speed flight. In my last video, I introduced the five aerodynamic regions of the rotor system, which included the positive stall region. So we'll do a quick recap and show you what we were talking about. So if this is my rotor disc, let's say it's moving forward in this direction, counterclockwise moving rotor disc. We had a few regions here. We had a reverse flow on the inboard retreating side. Then we had a negative stall a negative lift, the rest of this area being positive lift, and then we introduced a positive stall region, which could potentially grow into this area right here on the retreating side. All right, so this region, uh, this positive stall region, is experienced on the retreating side only, and it's due to the greater angles of attack and high, or during high forward air speeds. If a pilot does not understand the effects of flying into this condition, he or she could soon experience a violent change in aircraft pitch and roll, as well as a temporary loss of control of the aircraft's flight path. So what are some of the things that cause a retreating blade stall condition? Well, glad you asked. So causes, the number one reason uh, that you can find yourself getting into a retreating blade stall condition would be an excessively high uh, forward airspeed. And what do I mean by a high forward airspeed? I mean, when you look in your operator's manual and you see a little number uh, that says VNE. Now, VNE is velocity never exceed. This is a speed that's in your operator's manual that the engineers have determined for that helicopter that says that you are most likely going to get into a retreating blade stall condition or structural damage to that helicopter. It's a condition that you should be avoiding at all times and never trying to fly uh, at or above this airspeed strictly because you could get into this retreating blade stall condition. Now, another thing that can get in, uh, that can cause this retreating blade stall would be low rotor RPM, in the case of NR, speed of the rotor. Uh, with low rotor RPM, uh, remember that uh, from the lift equation, velocity has an exponential effect on lift and drag. So if the rotor is allowed to slow down, you're potentially having high angles of attack at low rotor RPM, resulting in a stall condition sooner rather than if you were to have uh, a normal NR or a higher NR. So low NR or low rotor RPM can cause this um, retreating blade stall condition. Next one uh, that can cause it, be too much forward cyclic. Now usually too much forward cyclic is a result of too much aft CG or aft center of gravity in the helicopter. And what happens is it causes excessive forward cyclic in order to compensate for that. When you do the forward cyclic, it's, a cyclic, it's increasing the pitch at the nine o'clock position. If you're already at high air speeds or you're potentially getting into a stall condition, you have excessively forward high uh, or forward cyclic, you're just agitating this stall region with even more higher angles of attack. So too much forward cyclic can potentially be a cause for it. Uh, lastly, excessively high collective angle. Now I say collective angle uh, for a reason. Some manuals list high gross weights, high G loading, high altitudes as a reason or a cause for retreating blade stall, but these are more so uh, factors that are or that pertain to collective angle. A helicopter can fly at high gross weights, it can fly at high altitudes, and it can fly at high G loading. But when you're trying to fly a helicopter that's too heavy and you're flying it too fast for the collective angle, you could find yourself getting in retreating blade stall or too high of an altitude and too heavy for the collective angle, you find yourself getting into retreating blade stall. But just flying at a high weight, high altitude, or high G-loading doesn't in itself cause the retreating blade stall. Those are more so contributors to the cause of retreating blade stall. All right, so that said, there are a few symptoms as you approach the retreating blade stall. First one being, vibrations. Um, now as the blades pass this nine o'clock position, begin getting to the stall condition, you begin to get vibrations 
because of differences in lift throughout this, or differences in lift and drag throughout the rotor system. This can potentially result in a vertical bounce as the blades pass that position. Now this should be some of your first indications that you should probably start slowing down whatever you're doing. Uh, if you continue, uh, you're gonna get into some kind of, or could potentially, depending on the rigging, get into some flight control feedback. And by flight control feedback, I mean potentially some kind of stiffening uh, or ineffectiveness of the flight controls. But if you were to continue to push through the condition and continue this high airspeed even more and more and more, uh, you would potentially get into a uncommanded and potentially violent pitching up of the nose. So the nose pitches up and you would get a roll to the side that is retreating. So roll to retreating side and our counterclockwise rotating um, rotor system, this is gonna be a roll to the left side. So this is the big one right here. This pitching up and uh, or pitching up and rolling to the retreating side is uncommanded and you may not be able to rest this thing for a little bit until the helicopter uh, straightens itself out. So you are in essence losing helicopter control at this point, which is the last thing that you wanna be doing, especially if you're in a situation where you know you may have buildings or something nearby that you absolutely need the control of the helicopter to avoid hitting. Um, so if this were to occur, and obviously you want to avoid this all at all costs, if this were to occur, there are a few steps to recovery. And by far, the number one thing, first thing you should do is lower the collective. Just like what we're talking about collective angle, usually this is a result of exceeding something as in relation to the collective angle in the blades. But by reducing the, the collective right away, you're doing three things for yourself. First, you're reducing the angle of attack in the blades, potentially affecting the stall condition, reducing that stalling effect. Two, uh, you're going to reduce your airspeed. Once again, taking away another cause here, uh, giving your, your retreating side a chance to try to catch up. Lastly, if you were lower, or if you did have a low NR, at this point, lowering the collective gives your NR or your blade RPM a chance to speed up. Next, uh, after lowering the collective, you want to reduce the severity of the maneuver of whatever you were doing at the time that you got into this situation and adjust the, con flight, tr adjust the flight controls sorry, for a normal flight. So adjust flight controls here for normal flight. Now, in some aircraft, more specifically those with a semi-rigid teetering uh, rotor system, the helicopter may start to self-correct for these conditions, but if you were to continue to aggravate this more and more and more, you may find yourself in a mass bumping condition. If you don't know what mass bumping is, it's ugly. Rotor can potentially fall off if you have any qu- or fly off, I should say. If you have any questions about that, I recommend checking my, vi my video on mass bumping. Uh, but in essence, retreating blade saw, you're getting to a point where the retreating blade can no longer compensate for the dissymmetry of lift and it begins to stall and is the most limiting factor for high-speed helicopter flight. Uh, we have a few symptoms, uh, causes, and how to recover that we outlined here in the video, but that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit like and subscribe below. I'm Jacob, and once again, this is Helicopter Lessons in 10 minutes or less. As always, safe flying.